Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with uh, some thoughts on the upcoming fight between King Arthur Abraham and the champion Andre Ward. Before I go further, let me just say the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, uh, once in a while, in analyzing a fight or a fighter, you get lucky. You actually have uh, a couple of films that you can look at that actually show that fighter's weakness right up front. Um, we actually have that opportunity here with Arthur Abraham. I was riveted by his last fight against... Stefan Bozik. And in that fight, it's fascinating, uh, Abraham um, comes in and throws some blistering, very hard body shots. Although that fight only went around and a half, Abraham had done a lot of damage to Stefan Bozik's body. Now, it was kind of interesting, though, because in that fight, and the video is up on YouTube, right? A lot of European fights after the fight tend to be up on YouTube, right? If you watch that fight and it's only about, oh, five minutes or less of action, you're going to see Arthur Abraham reveal himself as an ambush fighter. And what I mean when I say an ambush fighter is a fighter who fights in spurts. Just picture a slow motion version of Jean Pascal, right? That's who Arthur Abraham is. So he's outside, then he jumps in, throws a furious volley to uh, Bozik's body, then he backs back out. Now, interestingly enough, Bozik knows that going in. Because Bozik fights Abraham exactly the way you should. In fact, it's fascinating because um, given Bozik's skills, and Bozik isn't blessed with a great jab, it's interesting, Bozik actually follows Abraham, right? Because that's how you beat an ambush fighter. You follow him after the ambush. And even though Abraham's throwing the harder punches... His back touches the ropes two times in that first round. Then we get to the second round, and interestingly enough, again, even though Abraham is the one throwing the harder punches and coming forward at times, right? Bozik's coming forward most of the fight, but when Abraham does an ambush, he comes forward. Interestingly enough, Bozik always, after the ambush, is able to back Abraham up, and in fact, very early in the second round, Abraham's back again hits the ropes. For a guy who has as gifted a puncher as Abraham is, and he has one of the hardest punches in boxing, it is interesting to notice that um, he can be backed up even by a 36-year-old like Stefan Bozik. Now, where Abraham's weakness comes into play is when you shift from the Bozik fight and then look at his fight against Carl Frotch. You know what? Frotch takes away Abraham's ability to hit his body. Right? What Frotch does is Frotch leans forward at the waist and then throws a jab. Frotch uses length. That lean from the waist and turn sideways, which Bozik did not do, right? Completely baffled Abraham because Abraham could not get to Carl Frotch's body. Frotch kept him at the end of a jab, knowing that Abraham's balance is such that Abraham cannot duck under the jab. He doesn't bend his legs. He doesn't know how to bend at the waist. If you look at shorter guys who are able to come inside and then do damage, Mike Tyson comes to mind, Joe Fraser comes to mind, 
these guys all know Timothy Bradley comes to mind these guys all know how to duck under your jab and actually get inside to get to the body because if you take your body away from Arthur Abraham by leaning forward and having a jab that literally dictates distance in the ring like Carl Frotch did while of course throwing in feints and other skills but just take a look at Frotch's body forget the rest of his game it's too far away for Abraham to ever threaten it and this by the way is in a fight where Abraham is coming forward for periods of the fight and Frotch is backing up Frotch makes sure with a wide stance and a lean in other words superior boxing technique Frotch makes sure that his body is out of the equation so all Arthur is left with is Frotch's head and to get to Frotch's head Abraham had to try to get past Frotch's jab, right? The jab actually is the most important punch in that fight. Frotch flashes it repeatedly, right? And all I'm saying is Abraham, who is a power puncher, needs his balance to get leverage and isn't the kind of fighter who can literally bend in the ring. Abraham's unable to get by Frotch's jab. Now, the reason I point this out is Andre Ward has an excellent jab. Not only that, Andre Ward is a technician. He's that rare fighter in boxing who, as I like to say, can speak many languages. In other words, he can come inside and fight an inside fight like he did against Alan Green, like he did against Bika in his last fight. He could also go outside and fight the kind of outside fight that he did for much of the Mikel Kessler fight when he wasn't inside and the Edison Miranda fight before I believe it was the eighth round where Ward then came inside and smothered Edison Miranda and so I believe Andre Ward is gonna win this fight I think Andre Ward is gonna take away his body by bending forward at the waist just like Carl Frotch did and shooting a jab at Arthur Abraham I don't think we learned much from the Stefan Bozik fight in terms of what Abraham can do to beat a guy who knows how to use length in the ring and by length I mean he knows how to use his body in such a way where he's far away from his opponent his opponent doesn't have a lot to hit you know when the opponent gets inside he knows how to back away move away lean away so that the opponent has a hard time hitting him in the head it's like watching a shorter man trying to hit Vitaly Klitschko in the head right Karl Frotch masterful job one of the best boxing performances of 2010 literally makes his body a non-issue in the fight against the guy who quite frankly has one of the more devastating body punches in the sport just look at that Stefan Bozik fight how many body shots in about five minutes of action that uh, Arthur Abraham lands on him I believe Abraham is the kind of puncher who only needs one opening to change the course of a fight so the bet I'm recommending is you should take the favorite Andre Ward to win the fight right straddled against you know Abraham by KO in fact let me go further you know what Andre Ward it's questionable whether Andre Ward who doesn't have a big punch can knock out Arthur Abraham keep in mind Abraham has never been stopped two fights he lost one was a disqualification where the other fighter was unconscious at the end of the fight that was the Andre Durrell fight the other one was the Carl Frotch fight where even against a big hitter like Carl Frotch Arthur Abraham was never in danger of getting knocked out in the fight so for the risk takers who want to maximize their odds let me just make a suggestion right if the Andre Ward side of the bet is too rich for you in other words if the odds are just too staggered if it's minus 300 or worse 
then let me make a suggestion. You might want to take the over, which would give you Andre Ward by decision as well as Arthur Abraham by decision. You might want to take the over and straddle that against Arthur Abraham by KO, right? Or if you're really someone who is prepared to, you know, go high risk on this, you might want to take Ward by decision straddled against Arthur Abraham by KO. I would not pay, if I were you, for Arthur Abraham to win the fight by decision. I just don't see how that's going to happen against a far more athletic, far more active, excuse me, this is choking me up obviously, far more athletic, far more active Andre Ward. I think Ward wins the fight. I think the straddle side should be Abraham by KO. I don't think Ward uh, gets an early stoppage. There is a possibility since Ward throws so much volume, so much more volume than Arthur Abraham, that uh, Abraham gets stopped late in the fight if it's very lopsided and Abraham decides to quit on his stool in the corner. Keep in mind, uh, veteran fighters know when to say when, when they're completely outgunned. I think Abraham is a very proud man who, um, if he's going to lose his third fight in his last four, might prefer to do so on the stool as opposed to win the ring. Let me just add, too, that I believe that's what happened in the Mikhail Kessler fight. Um, had Kessler told the referee, hey, I can continue, I think that fight goes on. I think that Kessler, like Devin Alexander, um, you know, wasn't too enthusiastic to continue the fight. I'm not saying these guys weren't hurt. I'm just saying that, um, you know, compare and contrast them quitting with Miguel Cotto being asked if he wanted to quit against Joshua Clotty when he had a bad cut. And Cotto, of course, uh, being Miguel Cotto, said no, he wanted to continue. Let's just say that the other guys I'm mentioning did not want to continue in their fights. There is the possibility that Arthur Abraham, who did clash heads, by the way, with uh, Stefan Bozik toward the end of the first round, there is the possibility that Arthur Abraham might try to find a way out if he's getting shut out or humiliated in this fight. Let me also add one more thing, and we haven't seen this yet. But looking at the Bozik fight, I get the feeling that um, if someone wanted to fight Arthur Abraham inside, they could actually make an easy fight of it because I don't think Arthur Abraham can fight inside. I believe the only reason guys haven't done that is because it's easier to beat Abraham fighting him outside. But Andre Ward can fight inside. He did so against Green. He did so against Bika. There is a possibility that Andre Ward decides to mix it up just to uh, entertain the fans and to push himself. I've seen Ward do this before. He had the Edison Miranda fight, then he came inside. There is a possibility that Andre Ward could come inside on Arthur Abraham and literally cuff around one of the biggest punchers in boxing. A uh, few guys in boxing know how to fight inside effectively. Andre Ward is one of them. So to sum up, I like Ward in this fight. I fully expect him to win. For big-time gamblers who want to straddle, I would straddle that against Arthur Abraham by KO. And, of course, with regard to Ward, um, you know, if Ward wins, or rather when he wins, I think it's going to be later in the fight, by decision or by late stoppage. You might want to entertain taking the over on the Ward side of the bet. Thanks for watching.